In my last video, I briefly touched on the town of Mindguard, which functioned as a multiplayer hub in Monster Hunter 1 and Monster Hunter G on the PlayStation 2. Due to the servers shutting down several years ago, I had a hard time creating and finding footage of the town to show off. The lack of an online service also locked players out of fighting certain Elder Dragons, specifically Kirin and Fatalis. Mindguard Town has only ever appeared in Monster Hunter 1 and G, and otherwise has been lost to time, never appearing in another game within the series. But what if I told you that wasn't necessarily the case? What if I told you you could access Mindguard Town and you could fight Fatalis? What if I told you you could experience Monster Hunter Online as if it was still 2004? and experience the game with friends or an ever-growing and active community of old-school hunters? What if Mindguard Town was being restored? In between releases of my current series on the history of Monster Hunter, I want to take the time to create smaller videos focusing around specific aspects of the series, essentially side content in between larger uploads. Today, we're going to explore the online restoration project of Monster Hunter 1 and Monster Hunter G in a video I call Monster Hunter, The Lost Town of Mindguard Restored. Monster Hunter offers the user two options on startup, the village or the town. Choosing village will take the player to Kokoto, where they can take part in all of the offline content, increasing their hunter rank and progressing through the single player story and village quests, eventually culminating in fighting Monoblos and Lao Shan Lung. I went over a lot of this content in my previous video, A Brief History of Monster Hunter Part 1, and I suggest you check it out to get a better understanding of the first generation of the series and some of the development and lore surrounding it. Player their progress from village quests is saved and can be used in the game's town mode, which is the online component. Choosing town will take the player to Mindguard Town. Originally, players would have access to two servers, Red World and Green World, and from there would choose between town areas, broken up from A to Z. Within a town area, up to eight players could be online at a time and see one another in the hub world, but only four players at maximum can participate in a quest together. In 2008, servers would be shut down for North America and Europe, with Japan following following some time afterward. This would lock players out of the online specific content and prevent them from being able to play with friends or co-op. Fast forward to present day and it's with the help and work put in by the Monster Hunter old school discord community that we now have regained access to this content through the use of private servers. Through owning a Japanese copy of the game, players can set up access to their private network through a physical PS2 or PS2 emulator and even use fan-made English patches to play the game with ease. This reopens the world of Monster Hunter Online's first generation and allows players to experience all of the content that would previously be missing. It's also a great way for newer players to get a taste of the old school content and see the difference between modern day Monster Hunter games like World and what players used to experience. Now let's actually get into the features of Mindguard Town and start exploring. When players first log on, they'll appear in the central square area, where other hunters in the town will also be visible. Players appear to be coming up an elevator from the bottom right of the map. The area doesn't have much to do, but there are several NPCs the player can talk to, who comment on their progress as they make their way through various multiplayer quests. The town is built like a fortress, with large walls and cannons thrown about as defense if large monsters were ever to attack. The entrance to the armory is in the top left of the central square, with a large jaw blade hanging above it. Here, the players could create weapons and armor, similar to the smithy found in Kokoto Village. There are also more NPCs to talk to in here, as well as one of two item boxes where the player can change their equipment or grab and combine additional items. One of the locations in Mineguard that the player will spend the most of their time in is the tavern, which can be accessed from the central square through the top right, with a tankard hanging over the entrance. Here, hunters could hang out and socialize, as well as accept and post quests. Additionally, players can sit down at the benches inside and drink alcohol, as well as perform various emotes. There are multiple quests to choose from within the tavern, starting from 1 star and ending at 6 star. The quests have hunter rank requirements, with 1 star 
starting between Hunter Rank 1 to 4 and 6 star ending between Hunter Rank 19 and 20. On top of the star rank quests, there are urgent quests the player must take part in, similar to in Kokoto, and event quests. Event quests are special, limited time quests that allow the player to sometimes fight rare monsters or obtain rare rewards. For example, there is currently a limited time event quest where the player can hunt a Kirin. Additionally, the player can purchase various items from one of the NPCs found within. The tavern reappears in freedom, but from within Kokoto Village, as Mineguard Town is not an accessible option in the PSP series. Next to the tavern entrance is the entrance to the guest house, where the player can rent one of the various rooms based on their hunter rank. Each room contains an item chest, where you can store and change items and equipment, a bed to save, poogie, and a table where you can order food. Ordering certain combinations of ingredients will create a meal for the player, and bestow on them temporary skills to help in battle. Just make sure you make the right combination, because otherwise you'll get sick. The following options exist for the player. The Pawn Room, a small, free room for the player that has all the bare necessities and a Hunter Rank requirement of 1 so they can access it right away. The Rook Room, which is a slight upgrade to the Pawn Room. This area more resembles the player home in Kokoto Village. The Rook Room costs 200 zenny to unlock and the player must be at at least Hunter Rank 5. The Bishop Room is a much larger and cozier room for the player with a larger bed, eating area, and living space, as well as a nice rug on the ground. This room costs a total of 500 zenny to unlock and a hunter rank of 9. The queen room is a drastic improvement compared to the previous editions and allows the player to live in the lap of luxury. It includes all of the previous amenities as well as a balcony that looks out onto the town. Room cost is 1000 zenny and hunter rank requirement is 13. Finally, at a whopping 2000 zenny and a rank requirement of 17, we have the king size room which is the ultimate example of luxurious lounging. On top of the visual upgrade, the player has access to a seating area and a giant balcony where they can look out to the world before them. Additionally, the player has a little feline that offers combination tips. Finally, we have the market, located on the bottom left of the central square. The market featured various shops, including the combine, material, food, and tool shops. Talking to the dock worker would inform the player of any special sales going on that day. Shops would occasionally slash their prices in half or hold rare items they didn't typically sell. In the material shop, players could buy various items that could be used for crafting or combining. These items weren't very rare compared to what the player could acquire on a hunt, but sometimes would have better items thanks to the daily sales. The combined shop would allow players to offer materials for advanced combinations to create powerful items such as mega demon drugs or life powders. The player could also buy various combination books and consumables here as well. The food shop was where players could buy multiple types of meats that could be fed to larger monsters for various effects, such as paralyzing them, putting them to sleep, or poisoning them. The shop also offered various types of fish and nuts. The tool shop would sell various tools that the player could use for gathering when out on a quest, as well as rarer items such as Psycho Serum, which would allow the player to see the monster's position on the map without paintballing them, and Firecasters, which would allow the player to quickly teleport back to the starting camp. Through some of the footage, you can see I have been fighting the Elder Dragons Kirin and Fatalis, and I want to take a minute to show you exactly how that went.
Mineguard Town is back and with it, a part of Monster Hunter's history continues to live on. If you would like to experience Mineguard Town and a piece of Monster Hunter's past, check out the Monster Hunter Old School Discord, which has all the information you need to get connected to the server. Just know you'll need to get a copy of the ISO by your own means, with the suggested way being through purchasing the Japanese version of the game online. The Discord doesn't condone piracy and won't help you with any piracy issues. Additionally, know that the server is in beta and still in development. There may be a few hiccups here and there. Link to the Discord will be in the description. And that's it. Hopefully this shed a little bit of light on the no longer lost town of Mineguard for you. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, hello. Hello there. It's me. It's me again. I'm here. Uh, I made that video. I made it. You watched it, and I, I made it. And I'm, I'm in a different place now. If you watched my last video, I was at my old place. And as you can see, I have my bookshelf full of all my Monster Hunter paraphernalia. Well, not all of it. I have some stuff that I haven't put up yet. But yeah, this is the end of the video, and I'm just using it as an opportunity to uh, thank the people that helped me make it. So shout out to Sea Gifts. They are the person that uh, basically showed me that this existed. I, I thought that a private server for the online component of Monster Hunter existed, but I wasn't completely sure. And sure enough, it did. And they pointed me in the right direction and helped me uh, get into the Discord and figure everything out. So, so this video wouldn't like exist right now if it wasn't for sea gifts so i do i do really uh really appreciate that thank you so much because i think this is a really cool video and i don't think uh there's enough footage of mind guard town out at the moment so it's really cool that we can have some like high quality footage and explanation i think shout out to artemis aka immortal cripple for allowing me to use their save file so that I could actually access these like high-end quests like fighting Kirin and fighting Fatalis. I really do appreciate that. Um, it was really cool that you allowed me to do that. Uh, and shout out to Clayton and Night Dragon 98 for participating in hunts with me and Artemis when we went and fought uh, Fatalis. Uh, they're in there, they're in that video, you can see them. Appreciate it, me and uh, <laughs> Me and Clayton are the ones getting uh, one shot there by Fatalis. And uh, yeah, if you were wondering what that weapon was, uh, Artemis was mentioning to me uh, that it was uh, a dummy weapon that you can't actually receive in the game. Even if online was still available, you wouldn't have been able to receive it because there was never an event to give you the item you need to craft it. But through the private server, they made that item available, which I thought was really cool. Apparently in the weapon description, it says that it is a PlayStation mascot, but I don't know which one because from what I understand, that white cat guy is the main PlayStation mascot, but I couldn't find anything online about him. Um, if anybody knows, feel free to let me know in the comments. And yeah, like, comment, subscribe, hit hit the bell. Um, the next video is coming. Don't worry. I, I'm making it. I'm probably making it. I, at some point i just wanted to make this one this seemed really cool and hopefully you liked it okay